Hi there, Brian. Welcome to the show. The show is going out now live. Is there Satanism more prevalent in the world um, than it has been in the past? Go ahead, Brian, and just educate us on um, what you believe is happening. Okay, I think before we start talking about Luciferianism and Satanism, I think that we should really look at who introduced the idea to the um, New Age movement or the modern world, if you like, about Satanism and darker side or some saying the lighter side of religious philosophy. Realistically, the expert, in my opinion, on Satanism, on Lucifer, of course, is Steiner. For those of you who don't know, Steiner was born in 1861, died in 1925. He was the Austrian philosopher, social reformer, architect, esotericist. I mean, literally, he was a proper polymath. He was also a Rosicrucian. He worked with the uh, Goethe and Schiller archives in Weimar, um, he was a very, very clever person. He did join Blavatsky's Theosophical Society, but him and uh, Blavatsky decided that he'd be better off doing his own thing, which he called the Anthroposophical Society, which is, you know, which is quite interesting. During his lifetime, he wrote 30 books and gave thousands of lectures. I mean, literally everything that more or less is New Age now goes back to either Steiner, Bl Blavatsky, Gurdjieff, or um, Levi Eliphas. But realistically, in my opinion, Steiner is the one who gives a succinct concentration on what he calls Ahriman or Lucifer and how he describes him. Now, Ahriman goes back to the very first religion. We, we go right the way back to Mesopotamia. Parts of this religion are still practiced today. I mean, literally, um, when you see a car called Mazda, Mazda is actually the god of light from the early Mesopotamian religions. So, there's, there's something to think about. But what Steiner deduced was Ahriman and Lucifer were a two opposing spiritual forces that influence humanity. Interestingly, the actual Lucifer that we understand incarnated on Earth round about 3,000 years ago. Ahriman mm -hmm. is much older. The, the thing with Ahriman is Ahriman lulls humanity into almost a sleeping consciousness. I mean, this is one thing that Gurdjieff was always talking about. He was always telling people to be awake because the moment that you are asleep, that you are actually being affected by Ahriman. How Ahriman works is it's through materialism, nationalism and um, literacism. Li you know, literally absorbing information without thinking. He incarnated round about the third millennium. However, if we look at Lucifer, Lucifer tends human beings towards pride. Now, it's interesting, pride is one of the seven deadly sins, yet we've now dedicated a whole month to pride. Something to think about. The other side of Lucifer is the imagination, the spirituality. And there is a catch to this that he also teaches people to have a disconnect from the spirit, you know, from the physical world. People who are usually followers of Luciferianism tend to talk about higher levels of consciousness. They don't like the earth, etc., etc. This is, this is really how Lucifer works. He takes you into a, a higher level of consciousness, but it's, it's one that, that is not working with the earth. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. this, th this philosophy goes back to really it's, it, it's Plato when he's talking about the forms. So that, so the, the highest level of form within the Platonic logic is probably something like Lucifer. Interestingly, um, Bryce described himself as Lucifer. He called himself the morning star. This literally oh. ties into what Steiner was talking about. He said that the Christ was the manifestation of Luciferic knowledge, but spiritual insight, which sounds contradictory. But as I said, Lucifer's 
insight is to do with like higher realms and not really to do with the development of the world it's more to do with the individual so so hence the ego of the individual can really sort of be, you know be, be mislaid by the lucifer whereas ariman i mean to, to get an understanding of ariman you probably have to think about stalin okay joseph stalin and the communist regime he's definitely influenced by Ariman. I mean, essentially, he told people to not be spiritual. He told people to, to, to not have a divine process. And anybody who contradicted that philosophy, literally, he killed them. However, huh. the, the interesting thing is, is, is if we if we read Steiner, he's he's telling us not to ignore the Luciferian balance, if you like. Yeah, or the Luciferian influence. He's telling us to find the right balance between the two, but he's also telling mm. us to find the right balance between Luciferian spirituality and Aramanic physicality. Ariman is, is totally materialistic. And this is what you can see happening now, is, is that the world is becoming more and more materialistic. And the more materialistic it becomes, the more it leads towards the... Araman philosophy. Literally, Araman represents one-sided materialism, which is disconnected from the this, this, this spiritual, whereas mm. Luciferianism is spirituality disconnected from humanity. Steiner was saying was, was that you have to not ignore them, but you have to incorporate them into your life. To reiterate, he saw Christ as the mediator between the demonic Ariman and the satanic Lucifer, because Ariman is the unit that, that crushes to uninform uh, to, to the point of the destruction of the individual, whereas the influence of Lucifer is the opposite, where it's boosting the individual at the cost of humanity. That's the philosophy of Steiner. And, and, and realistically, having read quite a lot on Lucifer and having read quite a lot on Ariman, I would say that Rudolf Steiner's philosophy on both these characters is probably correct because you, you may have met spiritual people who are just full of ego. You know, my God is bigger than your God, etc., etc. And essentially, that's Luciferianism. And if you look round at the world now, that they're introducing philosophies which are totally Araman. You know, for example, they want to put chips in people, which will completely dehumanize us, which, of course, is what Araman is about. Whereas Lucifer is more about us trying to meet higher levels of consciousness. Does that make any sense? What I've said? Yeah, kind of. Um, how does it how does it play out in the Israel Palestine um, situation? Because I know I was listening to Mike Bentz the other day, and I know that that is all about um, money and oil and natural supplies, and of course Ukraine and and yeah, Russia. I mean, yeah, I mean that's completely Araman. I mean that's the, you know the, you know like I said, if you if you think back to like Stalin and the mindless slaughter for um, economic stability, that's essentially the work of Araman. So you know the, 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 this is the danger with the with with the Araman philosophy. It ma uh, it makes sense because it tells you don't believe in God, don't believe in spirituality, believe in materialism because after all we are material beings oh. so you can tell a tree by the fruit that it produces now yeah i i constantly think that people are like that i mean people um start bleating on about muslims how much they hate them this is a christian country and actually it's not a christian country is it, it i mean it's an atheist materialist um, yeah, yeah exactly it, it's, it's completely aramon yeah, it's, it's a completely Aramid. Yeah, yeah. So I goes, haven't seen this guy in the Bible anywhere. Well, no, and he's not. He's 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 a, he's literally from Mesopotamia, you know, sort of like. But but he's still around because um, there's quite a few older religions still practiced from that time. But the whole philosophy of Araman has has never gone away. In the Bible, they refer to Satan, but we're not talking about Satan. But Satan, realistically, is is a creation of God. Don't believe me, read Job, because essentially he gets one of his angels to be 
completely nasty to, to, to Job. And essentially that's done with God's consent. So, you know, Satan literally means the adversary, whereas Lucifer and Araman, they are, if you like, your darker doctrines which people go to. Can you tell us about where we were born and his background story? Who's that? Uh, um, Araman, yeah. Araman. Well, Araman is, is is part of Met the Mesopotamian philosophy. So he was he was he was created in the third century, and right. although he was created in the third century, he's you know his influence is still today. Like I said, you know, like if you drive down the street and you see a Mazda, I mean that literally translates to the Lord of Light. You know, the Mesopotamian religion is very much alive and well. Not only is it the philosophy of Araman, it's also the philosophy of like Mazda, etc., etc. I've I've i found something uh, just online about Araman, uh, written by pa uh, Paris. Um, oh God, Paris Stefania. Um, he says a third spiritual influence working into human and earthly evolution is Aramanic. The intention of Araman and his host is to freeze the earth into complete rigidity so that it will not pass over to the Jupiter, Venus and Vulcan ages and to make the man into an entirely earthly being, unindividualized, unfree and diverse from the normal gods cosmos. The yes. essential Aramanic tendency is to materialize, to crystallize, to darken, to silence, to bring living mobile forces into fixed form. In other words, to kill that which is living. That's exactly what Araman is doing. And and you can see that now with the advent of, if you like, digitalization. I mean, if you look at um, countries like China, Australia, and now even England, where they're introducing digital passports, but for inside the country, that means you have to behave how the government tells you to behave or you will lose credits or you won't be able to travel or something pressing your humanity. You have to be part of the machine. This is very similar to the um, early Stalinism because in, in Stalinism, you were constantly spied on by the KGB where now you're constantly spied on by the phone. When my grandfather fought in the Second World War to make sure that we were free and we never had the menace of fascism, well, it's here. Fascism is here, but essentially it's it's in the guise of digitalization and making your life better. And this is very Aramaic, very how it you know how it works. Mm. So, you know, did so, God did God create him like and there was a fall like with Lucifer or I mean there doesn't seem to be a little background story. He just is, and uh, essentially his 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 idea is is to pull you into his reality. You know his his world. He's not interested in the human being divine. He's interested in the human being, if you like, uh, like an ant. Whereas Lucifer is interested in you being divine, but not connected with the world lucifer is very much the individual it's not the masses and and this is the problem with with luciferianism yes it's very enlightening but what what people tend to do is say oh wow i'm really enlightened and you're not and you know you should you know you should go away because you're not as enlightened as me which is you know complete garbage and and this and this is your problem with, with with Luciferianism. If it's not kept in balance, it can be as equally as destructive as um, Ariman. They are two sides of the same coin. That they're both equally as destructive if they are not kept in balance. Does that make any sense? Yes. So, but how can we fight this Ariman in our own lives? But by keeping balance, because essentially you can't fight him. I mean, the point is, at the end of the day, you have to work to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. and, and that's part of Araman. However, Lucifer will tell you, oh, no, you don't need to do that, because essentially you can become part of the higher level of consciousness and you don't need to work and you don't need money, etc. Et well, Lucifer et sounds quite cool then in that case. <laughs> well, well, not really, because he doesn't really care about the earth. As far as he concerns, the earth, as we understand it, can go to hell. But, you know, you have to remember that Jesus called himself Lucifer, the Illuminator. He wasn't just balanced in the Luciferian ideal. 
he was also balanced in the human ideal. It's great to be enlightened, but if you're not helping everybody else, then there's not much point. You become yeah, very see. isolationist. Yeah. I mean, the point is, is you know, humanity at its best is when it's spiritual and it's creative. When it's at its worst is when it's materialistic and destructive. And that's essentially mm. what's happening in Ukraine. That's I mean, there's, there's wars all over the planet at the moment. It's not just Ukraine and um, mm, 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 Israel. Mm. You know, I mean, mm. there's wars going on in Africa. This is very much what Steiner warned us about with Ariman. If we look at war from a completely cynical viewpoint, everybody mm -hmm. makes money in war. The politicians make money in war. The arms mm. manufacturers make money in war. The soldiers make money in war. The builders make money in war. Everybody makes money, but it's at the cost of human life. But they ignore what they call the collateral damage because they're going to make money. And essentially, oh, I know it's 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 scary. It's all about money and all those dead kids we're seeing um, in the videos. And now they they hoosh the Palestinians into a little tent city. And then they bombed it. I mean, is that about a sacrifice? Well, no. I mean, essentially, that once again, that the the philosophy of Ariman on on steroids. You know, because you've got people. Tell me, explain that. Yeah, go on. Well, you've got people in a tent, and their houses have gone. What do you mm. do with them? You want the place where they are, but you don't want them. So obviously you get rid of them. That's very much of Ariman's philosophy. He doesn't view humans as humans. He views us, if you like, as, as some kind of weird cattle philosophy. And Stalin was the same. Stalin had a deficit where he had too many people and not enough money. Instead of improving his industry, he just killed the people. This philosophy is, is not good for humanity on any level. So would you say would you say that Araman is, is um, in control right now? Is ruling? I would say so. Yeah, I would say that we're we're less Luciferic, and we were definitely more following Araman. I mean, Araman is all about centralization. Well, that's Araman. He doesn't want you to have a voice. He doesn't want you to be able to think. He just wants you to be able to perform like an ant. That was the ethos behind the Soviet Union as well. The individual is sacrificed for the greater good. Quite vile, but essentially. And what, what 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 is the Luciferian? What what is that? What's that doctrine? Well, well, essentially, the Luciferian is all about being enlightened and going towards the light, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It doesn't really care about Earth. A great example. So isn't that a good thing? Well, hang on. Why aren't we Luciferians though? I, I don't really particularly like the Earth. I think it's a place of suffering. Um, so, yeah, but, but that, but that's what Araman would want you to think, yeah. Where, oh, really? Whereas, yeah, yeah. Where, whereas, like the Luciferians also want you to think that they want you to give up on yourself. Whereas the Christ, if you like, the philosophy behind the Christ, he incorporated those into his life, but still kept it in a spiritual context. Right. I mean, the, the ultimate nightmare, of course, is the Orwell nightmare, which essentially is is Araman or Stalin. Whereas Lucifer is opposite to that, but he's not interested in the world. Well, it's, I, I asked the question again: Why aren't me and you friends? So why aren't we Luciferians? It seems like a good gig. Well, it's, it's not really because essentially, if you're a Luciferian, then 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 you only care about yourself and you only care about your own enlightenment. You're not really interested in, if you like, you know, the greater good of humanity. And in reality, that is not what we're about. We're we're supposed to be together as people to help ourselves evolve into being better humans. Where neither of these two philosophies is about us being better humans. It's either light with Lucifer, or you are a piece of cattle under Araman. Mm. Neither neither of these philosophies takes into account that we are humans with souls. You know, I think you've just given me a, a really um, big insight because I was, as you know, in this um, court battle that's been going on, which is. Um, the old world, like the old newspapers, 
um, versus the Guardian, which is the new, uh, this new young Prince Harry and all that. That seems to me now, because I thought, hang on, I'm in between two. And I started to, when the, um, the uh, Guardian side started to come at me. I mean, not all of them, but there was one guy and he's pretty much a head honcho in all this. He's very much left, right, left, right, left, right. And he's very like a big um, speaker for it. He, uh, me and he had a little bit of a contretemps <laughs> and um, he came at me attacking me spiritually. Now I thought, hang on, this doesn't make sense because I thought only the oldie worldy side um, would be like the ones, because they're obviously linked with Freemasons, yada yada. Uh, but I thought, hang on, this new side has got a really dark, nasty spirituality. I felt it coming at me and through this guy. Um, okay, they might have been impersonating him, but I felt the weight of it. So this might, you, I think you've just given me a key. I think this is maybe um, Araman um, versus the Lucifer side and maybe the Araman side wanting to come in and call itself, um, you know, all left wing, woke and all that. Well, um, I mean, that's essentially Araman. Yeah, Araman is, is left wing, woke, oh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, anything, okay, that, okay. anything that destroys the human spirit, then that's Araman. Whereas, right, right. whereas the opposite is Lucifer, but he's not interested in humanity. So you know, so which is the Freemasons and all that. I mean, they're well, selfish. Freemasons is it's a complicated story. If you want an, a real insight into sort of like Luciferianism, then you have to look at Blavatsky. I mean, the secret doctrine is essentially promoting Luciferianism. But but the point being is 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 that Blavatsky. Well, it's really Blavatskaya, you know, this is really quite, because I live in Russia and I know it's interesting, it's Blavatskaya. But she wasn't stupid. She balanced both sides. Yeah, she, you know, she balanced mm -hmm. what it was to be human and what it also was to be enlightened. Mm -hmm. really. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, this very much falls into the Hindu idea of the Naga. You know, for example, mm -hmm. if, if you talk to a Hindu adepts, about the Bible, they always say that the the snake in the Bible, who is often referred to as Lucifer and you know blah 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 Satan or whatever, is actually liberating humanity. It's, well, of uh, course, Shiva, Shiva Shiva has Varuna the snake around, isn't it? That whispers in wis wisdom. Yeah, but we're talking about the Naga, the Naga who enlightened. The human to eat the the knowledge, okay, and, right. and, 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 and the naga. I, the, the, the not, can you just for our audience explain the naga what they are? Right, right. The, the naga are a kind of a snake creature. I mean, if you go to Thailand, they're everywhere. If you go to India, they're actually not so prominent in India, but in Thailand, they're absolutely everywhere. I mean, literally. Um, that there's a, a big Buddha, a massive Buddha, and all the way up to the steps of the Buddha leads the Naga. And this isn't design. This is telling you that if you find the light within, then you will find what is Buddhism. Yeah, because, you know, once again, Buddhism really, um, a lot of people are going to get angry with me, but really Buddhism is, is a type of Luciferianism. It, it, doesn't talk, it doesn't talk about a god. It talks about the light within. And this is very much Luciferianism. And it's also very nihilistic. Yeah, I mean, sort of many people join Buddhism. They sell everything. And they join the Buddhist community, so they are isolated from the rest of the world. That is very Luciferianism. Once you start understanding the philosophy, you can understand the, the background thinking of a lot of these so-called religions or belief systems. But you know, what, 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 what about the Catholics? What are they? Well, I mean, the Catholics are quite interesting, really. Um, I mean, the Catholic... It's is 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 a real mismatch of sort of like you know of like different religious philosophies. They claim to be Christian. However, I don't know how it can be Christian because essentially if if you understand anything about the time of Jesus, most people were semi illiterate, if not illiterate. Jesus spoke Aramaic. Now Ar Aramaic was before the the time of Muslim. And essentially, the Aramaic language is 
all about connectedness and vibration and light. But this mm. doesn't this doesn't come across in the Bible. It comes across as the church is the lot is the leading and and all this blah blah blah. Where Jesus is is promoting no, you find the heaven within, which is also very Luciferianism. You know, Luciferianism is about finding the light, finding the balance within yourself. Mm. Whereas the Catholic Church, call it by its proper name, which is the Roman Catholic Church, essentially it's, it's, it's almost like a military discipline. If we look back, I mean, I would say that the, the Catholic Church is very similar to the Araman philosophy, because if back in the day, if you didn't believe in the, the Catholic Church, they tortured and burnt you to death. They didn't care about your humanity. They only cared if you yeah. believed in the Catholic Church, which has got very strong Araman leanings to it. So, so I would say that the, the Catholic Church is is less Luciferian and more towards Araman. That was so interesting. I'd love to do a, a part two because um, it's so fascinating. I mean, I really feel like I've been woken up now. Okay. I feel less confused. It's like, wow, really? Wow. I mean, so could you come back and do a part two? And I'm sure people have got well, yeah, lots of questions. Cause, cause, yeah, because we haven't looked at um, we haven't looked at Blavatsky's philosophy on um, Lucifer, and that's really important because that's very prominent in today. Um, also, Excellent. Gur yeah, also Excellent. Gurdjieff as well. Gurdjieff's um, philosophy on Lucifer is very, very interesting. And of course, the, right. grand, the granddaddy of them all was e Levi Eliphas, and it's you know it's very interesting to get their take on it. But uh, as I said at the beginning uh, of, of our talk. Realistically, I think if you want to learn about Araman and Lucifer, then it, you know it has to be Steiner, really. Until okay. Next, well, that's until brilliant. Well, thank you, thank you so much. I mean, that was amazing. So, thank you so much. See, see you, see you um, next week. Thank you, Brian. That was amazing. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And I'm sure you'll agree that that was very enlightening and um, has opened new, certainly new doors in my mind. And I certainly feel um, a lot less confused. <laughs> so Brilliant. thank you thank you very much see see you next week and thank you everybody for listening thank you see you soon bye